Hi all, welcome back to the next episode of my Rostock Max version 2 build. I'm now on to building the actual base of the machine. So, so far we've unpacked it. We've removed all the melamine parts and stripped off the masking tape. We have all the parts right there. We then prepped the hot end with the heating resistors and the thermistor. So that's curing right now. And then I went ahead and prepped the power supply with all of the sleeved cabling and attached it to the blocks and the, and the lugs. Now we get to move on to building the actual machine. So we've got the, the manual up with the list of parts that we need. And I've got everything laid out. So this is the base plate. This is the bottom of the base plate. It's the bottom side up. We're going to start by putting in the feet. That's the power supply mount. These are the three sides. These are the uh, Rambo uh, mount support clips. And then we have our various hardware that we're going to need. The manual and the parts list, the parts list includes this little socket head cap screw. And the manual says that you can use that as a tap, and that's a great idea. You don't have to run out and buy a tap set, but I actually do happen to have a tap set, so I've got my taps ready to go. The smaller one and the bigger one. It's really funny. The small bit actually has to go into the big handle because the small bit don't fit into the small handle. And the big bit has to fit into the small handle. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so first step is we're going to take out some of these little nylon screws. Feed them through the black cups and we're going to install the feet supports in these holes right around here. Let me just double check to make sure I know what holes I'm pointing at. We'll go up on our manual. There's a lot of blank spaces in this manual. Okay, so we're looking for the fatter holes. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, it's those fatter holes. Because it doesn't fit in those ones. Must be those ones. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, so, and then we flip it back around so it's right side up. Now, I'm going to do this just upside down because it still actually works. So these go in here. But that accidentally hit the power button on uh, my camera phone. So this... There. It goes there. I do believe. Let me just have a quick look. Holy, a lot of pages in this manual. Anyways, I think that's how they go. No, maybe not. Yeah, no, that's right. Anyways, I'll show you more in a bit. So we also have to screw uh, some screws into here and whatnot, but you can read the manual. Anyways, be right back. So I almost forgot to mention, I have some Windex here and a roll of paper towels. I'm going to be giving each piece a good thorough cleaning and then I'll wash my hands before working with it. And I actually forgot to do that. And that's just to keep everything clean because this black edges from the laser cutting do get dirty. So I've got my plastic feet installed. Just the black parts. The reason why I'm not going to install the white caps is these are high friction caps. And while you're building the machine, well, you know, I just want to be able to slide it around rather easily. Now I better make a note here. These videos aren't instructional videos. I'm just documenting my build, but I do tend to talk like this is some sort of an instructional video. I'll try not to, but I guess that's just what I do. So these are just nylon, so you don't actually need a wrench. You can just use the flathead screwdriver and just basically hold that with your finger until it bites in and then just snug them up. It's very easy to do. So the next step says that we have to, the vertical supports need to have four Nylon, wait, no, I think I'm jumping ahead. Wait, no, what? Okay, uh, so we're going to install these half inch screws first. That's the flathead screws. They go into these center holes right here and here. And I'm going to use this tap to tap those out. But first I gotta clean all the parts. Alright, bye bye. I started putting 
I've started putting in the acrylic stop screws. So tip number one, don't tap these holes. Just drive the screws straight in. It's easy enough. They don't need to be tapped and they get better bite if you don't tap them. So don't tap those particular screws. <laughs> and off we go. The three vertical supports are now done. They've been labeled uh, just like the instructions tell. Installing the nuts was fairly straightforward uh, using the method mentioned in the documentation. You just simply grip your nut with your pair of pliers and push it in. Uh, it really does seem to be the best method if you try doing it with your fingers. Your fingers get really sore really fast. So I've got all the set screws in. Next step is to attach the power supply to the power supply mount. Using these nuts right here, or these plastic screws. Okay, so yes, I did screw up and put the feet in <laughs> the wrong side. So I'm going to take all the feet off and put them back on the other side where they belong. And there's the next, the next step done. So everything is installed and tapped and we got all the proper screws in place. And I believe it's even right side up. Okay, so the next step is we start installing some uh, stepper motors, apparently. Yeah, cool. The next step has us prepping our drive motors by installing the drive gears using thread locker compound. So down here we've got, I've got my package of drive gears. Sorry, I've got my package of stepper motors. There's four of them in there. We're only going to need three. And then inside here, these are the drive gears that we need. And I'm going to try something different. I'm actually, I bought this uh, gel, thread locker gel. I'm going with a blue instead of a red. I normally use the dribbly stuff and whatnot, but I thought I saw the gel and I thought, well, let's try the gel. Stepper motors, they're cool. When you dump out the bag of little parts, please be careful. <laughs> there are six little... Uh, uh, grub screws in there and it actually comes with the allen key you're going to need which is fantastic the drive gears have two holes two threaded holes in them one uh, at 90 degrees to each other and then of course the stepper motor has the flattened side of the shaft I don't know if you can actually see that on the video there we're going to use both grub screws and both set screws to set them on the shaft So that was pretty easy. Nothing complicated at all. Make sure that you're flush on the top. Give them a good crank. Make sure you got some good thread locker in there. And you're done. You got a lot of, a lot of wire hanging on here, so <laughs> that's awesome. And next up, assembling the tower supports. Be back soon. Now I'm on to the tower supports. Except the tower supports support a lot more than just the towers. It's also where the stepper motors go. So here we got the stepper motors. These are the cheapskate, what are they called? Cheapskate idler bearing spaces. We got some melamine parts for the uh, stepper mounts, the tower support mounts, and then a bunch of hardware and then the bearings themselves. Gosh, I love bearings and Stepper motors, man. I just I love bearings and stepper motors. You can just do so much with stepper motors and bearings. And gears. Gotta love gears. Gears are fun. There's no gears on this, though. Alright, I'm going to start assembling these according to the instructions, and I'll just check in now and then. Bye-bye. Let's just have a quick close-up of the bearing and the spacers. You can see that the spacers have a little, well, it's an axle. So all we got to do is just drop a bearing. onto the axle, drop the other spacer right on top, and you're done. Oops, sorry about that. And that's all it is. So when you're seeing these in the pictures and you're wondering what they are, that's all they are. So the company behind CME CNC, they've actually been around for a while. CME CNC is just a new name they're using uh, with their 3D printer business. I think their actual name is something like Blackbird, if I remember correctly. And their core business is high precision machining, uh, high precision milling, and ejection molding, making 
components and products for other companies and industries. And I'm wondering, are these, and maybe somebody there will watch this video and tell me, are these idlers built by you guys in-house? And that's one of the things about this kit, and one of the reasons why it seems to be so inexpensive at only 999 American, and yet it's so big. 11-inch uh, diameter build plate, the whole thing is like 4 feet tall. And even though it's a kit, but how is still, it's really inexpensive, and that's because a lot of these parts are actually made in-house. And I suspect these are some of them, and not just the arms and the pivots and everything, but even these. And these look like they're very well made. The laser melamine parts, I'm not sure if they're cut in-house. I think they are, maybe, but I actually don't know that for sure, so I shouldn't say if they are not. Maybe somebody will comment. So continu continuing on, I've mounted the stepper motors to their motor to the mounts, and put the nine nuts into the plates for the tower mounts. The motor mounts or the stepper motor sorry the stepper motors are attached with just uh, four screws each. Now it doesn't say this in the instructions, but I did use Loctite on them. Whenever there's a metal to metal connection, a screw to a metal part. I use Loctite just to always make sure the Loctite is put on the edge of the on the side of the screw not the bottom of course so there shouldn't be any worries about dripping into the motor or anything like that it shouldn't be a big deal so now I'm moving on to the next step which is just prepping these by putting a, an inch and three quarter inch screw there with a the washer on it so you got lefts and rights of these well you got that was stupid you got two lefts and one right or whatever it is you can see that they're a little bit backwards and now those screws I just put in just fell right out so let's just put them back in really so I had pressed the power button again I hate when I do that Ugh. all right I ain't doing this one-handed too okay so let's see where are we at in the manual right there so continuing on is now to mount the idlers so here let's just move this one out of the way bring this over here we'll take one of take one of take one of the take one of these and it just goes right on there boom we'll grab another one of these Get some light over here, maybe. Boom. And then... And then... One of these... Goes on this way. This way. Sorry. Hey, look at that. I sort of did it one-handed. And then those just kind of mount on there. So now you've got your stepper motor in the middle there, and you got your idlers. <laughs> and then, um, I guess you're just using the night nuts to hold them down. God, that's just so dark. How can you ever see anything I'm making here? Really sorry for the dark video. Maybe, maybe it's because I have this open. Oh, there. Oh, see, that's better, isn't it? Oh yes, it is. Sorry, I had the uh, draped open, and now you can really see what I was doing. So that's how they go together. Pretty simple and straightforward and easy. So I'm going to do the last couple of them and get them all knotted, knotted together. And that is the end of that particular step.
So these just slot right into the holes on the base plate. Right between the feet, which is the perfect place for them. Just kind of, there you go. Grab a Y or whatever this one might be. And boom. So, getting there. What's next? What's next? Oh, we just got to route some wires. Oh, I guess I got to bolt these in. Drop them, yeah. Install the screws from the bottom. Okay. So, yeah, I got to screw those in and then route some... Uh, uh, connectors. And then attach. So we still got a bit more work to do. Huh. Okay. So the final step was to just get all the screws in from the bottom. Just kind of finger tight to get everything held fairly in there. And then finally install all the slot nuts. That's these big, that's these long flat things right there. This is where the T-slot will slide in. The T-slot's over there. Was it the uprights? So they'll just slide right into there. Once I get a... I don't know what I'm going to do here. I hate this. I freaking hate this. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So before I get... Uh, the next step is to install the top plate. So before I do that, I'm just going to have a look around here and see what it is I want to do with this thing. Um, I don't like this here. This isn't good. Things are too close to belts. That's bad. So I'm probably just going to... I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I don't... I'll figure it out. So as I was looking around to determine what to do with uh, the bundle of extra cables, sort of just cutting them off, I went back to the original manual and I was looking at what they did there. Because I seem to remember it mentioning something about a way to pack those cables. And what I noticed was this. And I've come to discover maybe something. So I've been following the second edition of the manual because it has a lot more things. And I and I noticed that the manual reflects my kit. So this is the front bit where those mounts go. And you can see that it just has the three horizontal slits. And so does mine. The original manual shows a slightly different base plate. It has angled vents and only a few of them in a very small area. Whereas this one... You know, like I was saying. So I'm thinking not only is it a second edition manual, it's actually a second edition of the second version. And that's cool because they're obviously making improvements and just incorporating them in. These are just a new revision of the second edition. And I love that fact that they're doing this. Uh, see, uh, see, me CNC has also come out with their new uh, Orion, which is a really gorgeous kit, but it's a bit small. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're looking for something, you know, I think this might be a good way to go. And the other thing is, is there's lots of uh, abilities to mod this thing and do whatever you want because you've built it. And because of the parts that it actually uses, you have a, a lot of freedom to do what you want. Anyways, I'm continuing on with trying to determine what to do with that bundle of cables. I just can't figure out what I want to do with that. Somewhere in here, I think it mentions, I don't know. I got to just, I don't know, I'll figure it out. The final step is just to install the top of the base, right on top of what we've already built. I'm going to use a few of the one inch screws and the, you get to, uh, get to install some blind nuts onto the back of the plate so that we can install, I can install the bed, the heated bed, uh, in a later step. The blind nuts come out of the Onyx bed package. The screws are already right there. So we're just going to set this up on top and see, uh, how well it fits. Well, I got the top on. A little bit of fussing and messing. I started off with this corner and I got these in and I put a screw in just to hold it. And then got these ones in and held it. But I could not for the life of me get any of this side in. So I popped it all off again and I started on this side. And it took a lot of work and effort to get all of these bit lined up. But once they did, the rest were easy. But this is the power supply faceplate. And yeah, that was hard. And this one wouldn't line up either. So that's it. It's all done. Now I just got to 
go through and tighten up a bunch of screws. Sorry, no light there. Um, so that's the end of this stage. Just tightening everything up. And there's no more light anyway, so I can't do much more video. So that's the end of episode two. Next bit will be the Onyx bed and whatnots, and then the uprights and whatnots. Okay. There we go. Thanks for watching.